Go on, go for it. Go on. Sure? Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, stuff we're flying. Yeah, yeah. geez, how good is that for a seven year old car? G'day, guys. We've got a very special episode for you today. I'm meeting Rob and Robin Dean here today. They're um, original uh, Model S owners, and um, we're going to have a bit of a chat and ask them about um, their um, very unique Model S. So, Rob and Robin, first of all, thanks very much for um, taking the time to um, have a chat. Not a problem at all. So I suppose um, first question is how did the whole Tesla journey all start with you? What's what's your origin story? <laughs> oh, really? I, I've had an interest in electric cars, but I, you know, Legacy Auto just weren't interested in making something that was going to be good. Tesla were, but they were expensive. Um, but when they introduced the P85D Performance Tesla, um, things changed a lot. Then, um, you know, this this car is is one hell of a car. So we're going back to 2015? Even before that, back right. before 2014, before the cars were, you know, even looked like they were coming to Australia. So, uh, so when did you, so tell us a little bit about um, what made you start looking into Teslas in the first place, because presumably you were driving a internal combustion engine car at the time? Yeah, we had a um, four wheel drive and just the benefits of driving an EV just are many. So what was it that made you, you know, because it would have been a pretty unique thing to do back seven years ago. So there would have been, what, half a dozen or a dozen Teslas in the whole of WA at that time, uh, and probably as many, uh, you know, electric vehicles. So what was it that appealed to you about the Model S? What made you take the plunge? Well, in, in those days, there was only two Teslas, the two original Roadsters, which were delivered in about 2011, I believe. Um, there was no other, there was no Model S, no other car. So basically, for this particular car, it was the performance. It was, the, you know, there was nothing like it in those days. Right, and so supercharging obviously wouldn't have been important to you back in those days because there were no superchargers in WA. So how did you sort of work that out? You know, before you took delivery of the car, did you think, you know, where am I going to charge this thing? How's that going to work? Well, basically, you know, we, were, we knew we could charge a home off the solar power, not a problem. We knew we could charge off, you know, caravan power points and those sort of places. Supercharging, was not in our minds at all. We didn't see the benefits of it. But now, supercharging, you know, when you when you look at it, it really is a huge thing. Absolutely. Um, so we're, well, we're up to almost five now, or well, four and a fifth one coming in Lancelin. You guys have just come back from um, Lancelin, which is going to be the location of the fifth supercharger in WA? The rumor is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good rumor, that one. Uh, it's a reliable one. Um, okay, so, um, now, when you bought this car, did you buy it to do, you know, a lot of, you know, long trips or did you buy it as a city car or what was the intention? It was for long trips, but we've done far more long trips than we ever expected to. So uh, I know you've gone around Australia, you're being very modest. So, you know, time to brag a little bit. Tell us uh, where you've gone with the car. Every state, every territory, every capital city, um, wherever people say you can't drive an electric car, it's good fun to go and drive there and, and prove them wrong. So you've been around Australia twice now? No. Uh, once in an EV. Once in an EV, if, yeah. right. And once okay. in a petrol car in 1992. So what was the difference taking a petrol car around Australia versus an electric car? Cost-wise, there would have been a difference? Oh, uh, yeah, huge. Um, it was a lot cheaper, and this was 20 years ago, it was still a lot cheaper to drive it around three years ago compared to 20 years ago. In a petrol car? Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, yep, definitely. Wow, so a good inflation hedge. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me a little bit about the car. Now, you've done 250,000 kilometres now on this car, I believe, over seven years. So that would make it the most extensively travelled private car, a first owner private Tesla in WA. Would that be accurate? Yeah, so, so non-commercial privately owned in WA, yes. There is a car in Victoria, a privately owned Victoria, uh, that's done about 265,000 kilometres. Right, so, so it might be in the top two or three in, in Australia, but definitely in WA. Uh, definitely in WA, yeah. And it's a pretty unique car as well because it was the first performance in WA, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, first dual motor performance. So the first dual motor performance, right. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the the ownership experience what's it been like um owning the car over the last seven years pretty, pretty simple really um, there's not much service to be done um, people talk a lot about the fuel savings now yes there is fuel 
savings with this car, but you, should, you don't buy an electric car just for fuel savings. There are so many other benefits. The safety, the enjoyment to drive, um, and, and just, just, it's just so much more, just such a better experience driving an electric car than a petrol car. Yep, so if we were to talk about, so yes, absolutely, there's so, as you said, there's so many advantages to an EV, but if we were to talk about the costs, because that's an important thing for many people, because EVs in general, the upfront cost or the sticker price is a little bit more, so people to try and justify that higher price look into the 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 ownership costs or the you know, things like servicing, fuel, so over the last seven years, um, you've put some figures together as to how much the cars cost you basically not what it's yeah so what it's cost us if you add the tires in the tires you're looking at about four thousand six hundred dollars that's that's for 250 two thousand dollars of driving that's pretty good um so how many tires tire changes have you had how on average how long do they last you so we've just put the fourth set of tires on so the average set is last eighty one thousand kilometers wow and as far as maintenance goes, maintenance has been very good. Um, I replace the door handles myself, that's a known problem with these cars. It's quite easy. Um, the 12 volt battery failed eventually at 220,000 kilometres. That was replaced, including labour, was like $270 for your 12 volt lead acid battery. That's quite good. Um, but I feel more comfortable knowing that this car is going to have far less maintenance than a petrol or diesel car. Absolutely. So, um, so four thousand six hundred dollars including tires um is, is was there any other cost that we need to add to that or is, is that your total cost of owning the car for a quarter of a million kilometers so people say you don't need to service an electric car in my mind that's not actually really true if you if you love your car and you want it to last a long time you should still take it in and get it serviced from time to time you don't have to do it every 10 or fifteen thousand kilometers like a petrol car in this case maybe every hundred thousand kilometers book it in get it checked over correctly it's it's well worth spending that money but uh, tesla doesn't mandate that so your uh, warranty isn't um, going to be affected and there is no actual maintenance schedule that comes with the with the cars these days uh but um but it, as you said it's well worthwhile taking your car in every hundred thousand kilometers anyway just to give it a, a check over and just for peace of mind and making sure that if anything does go wrong it's going to go wrong in the city rather than across the Nullarbor somewhere. That, that's exactly it. You, you're taking the car in because you appreciate the car you have and you want to get it looked at. You're not taking it in because the dealer is saying if you don't bring it in, there's no warranty. Right. Excellent. Okay, so um, quarter of a million kilometres, seven years. Um, in terms of what's gone wrong with the car, uh, has there been any sort of things that have made you take the car into service to get fixed or...? Yeah, as you say, door handles. The first door handle I had, I had fixed under warranty. Um, the rest of them I done myself. That's like a $2 part that fails. And if you've got a, an hour, an hour and 20 minutes of your own time, fix it yourself. The 12 volt battery, which is lead acid, that's a, that fails on the car eventually. In this case, it was six and a half years before it failed. Um, and the rear drive motor was replaced under warranty at 160,000 kilometers. And that, the great thing about that is that rear drive motor actually gets refurbished and it gets reused in a vehicle in California. So the part is being reused, which is really good. The motor didn't fail though, did it? It was, it was just a bit noisy, correct? Yeah, the motors, the motors assume start to make a, a bit of a noise, which is irritating. So under warranty, they just replace it. It's the biggest thing to do. Okay, excellent. Um, now, what about the consumables? You've talked about the tyres, windscreen wipers, those sort of things. Yeah, windscreen wipers. I think I think I did replace those at about two hundred and twenty thousand. Wow. Okay. So um, and so that four thousand six hundred that includes the windscreen wipers. That includes everything, correct? Uh, yeah, I think they threw the wipers in during the service, and I chucked them in the back, and they sat there for like fifty thousand. And I said, I'll do it myself when I get time. Right. Excellent. So if you were to own an internal combustion engine car instead of a Model S, what would you have spent with all your you know, huge trips, your 5,000, your 20,000 kilometre trips that you've been doing? What's 36,000 fuel? Probably, yeah, $39,000 of fuel would have been spent if this was a V8. Right, so, I mean, the average Australian car costs about 40, 41,000, so your savings are coming up to almost that, you know, at about $35,000, would would that be roughly correct? I would say that's probably, probably about right, yeah. 
and, and let's not forget that going forward, that internal combustion engine car would be getting slower, whereas um, you, you let me drive your car and, you know, it certainly still feels like a performance electric car. It still goes like a bed out of hell. Straight. Okay, to give it a bit. Yeah, go on. Sure. Go on. Don't, no, not for straight, not for dead start though. Not for dead stop because you will break an axle. Go on, <laughs> go for it. Go on. Sure. Yeah, go. Shit. Yeah. All your stuff went flying. Yeah. yeah. Geez, how good is that for a seven-year-old car? Yeah. So what I do is we we never do dead stop ones anymore. Okay. Um, in this because I know an axle is going to go. It's <laughs> you can't just keep doing that to a car over and over again. Well, um, I, I would I would tend to disagree with you, and I'll tell you why. Because um, you know Tesla Loop in California, that's the rental company that rents out nothing but Teslas. And I mean, what are rent people going to, going to do when they rent out a Tesla? And they've never driven one. Yeah. First thing they're going to do is plan the foot. So those cars would have been thrashed like no other car. And some of those cars have done over half a million kilometres. You know, five hundred thousand k. Yeah, nothing's nothing's. You haven't seen, you haven't noticed any change in the seven years in terms of the performance. No, he's just just. I actually, I actually, the the car's got slightly quicker with software updates. It is slightly quicker, um, but you know, as you as you've had the car for a long time, you, you sort of you don't worry about that sort of stuff. You yeah. know, you've, you've had the fun when the first fifty thousand. So exactly, and so what I was going to say from before so if you had an internal combustion engine car now with 250,000 kilometers you'd be getting ready to retire the car or, or fixing things all the time exactly and you'd have to budget for that so that you wouldn't be out of pocket um have you got a budget in terms of ongoing maintenance for this car or is it um just something that you don't have to don't really worry about i'm, I'm not concerned i really not if, if anything goes wrong I, I can't see it being that major a problem all right excellent so um What's your plans with the car now? Are you looking to sell it, or is this something you'll own for the rest of your life? Or it's, we're going to keep it, so we'll, we'll always have it. So we're just waiting for the um, Model Y to come through. Fantastic. So, um, so you'll have you'll be a two Tesla family. Yep. <laughs> um, so, you, so you'll have a Model S and a Model Y. Who's going to drive the Model Y? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> so who drives this car more, you or Rob? It's about equal. Yeah, right. Okay. No, that's not true. She drives it. <laughs> no, no. That's only because you drink and then I drive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. So, but is it, I've noticed a couple of times it's a bit of an arm wrestle between the two of you as to who's going to drive the car. If, I can't believe seven years on and you still, you still prefer to be driving than being a passenger. Yeah, well, who's better driver? <laughs> Oh, it's a safety consideration, I see. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about um, you guys. So, you know, this you, you were one of the first original Tesla owners. You've also been really uh, involved with the EV community in WA, both in terms of the Australian Electrical Vehicle Association as well as Stockholm, the Tesla Owners Club of WA. Um, so, Rob, you're, you're the chairman. Did you want to just um, tell us a little bit about what the community is like here in WA? Yeah, I mean, if if you were if you were looking at buying an electric car in, West, in Western Australia, um, you you're going to do very well because there's a really good community in Western Australia. Ava, Tokwa, um, there's always someone to help you with your car, help you with the charging, help you with the software, you know, the screens, the maintenance, and all, and all that sort of stuff. So there's a there's a really good support group in Western Australia, um, and that helped us when we were starting out. And there's there's dozens more people now to help people now. Absolutely. So, Tokwa, we've got, um, is it about, um, what are we at now? How many uh, Facebook members and about, is it three, four hundred financial members? I think we're, we're close to 500 official members right. and we're, we're nearly at 1,500 Facebook members. Then you've got AVA as well, um, which, is, which is, AVA Western Australia is the second biggest state as far as members go. And so there's lots of AVA members, you know, guys, guys that have got Hyundais and MGs and Leafs, Nissan Leafs and those sort of cars. But they all get on with each other. They all help out with the charging facilities. So it's, it's a really good um, setup here. And we should mention the Australian Electric Vehicle Association is the longest standing EV association in the world, coming up to 40, uh, coming up to 50 years, sir. Yeah, 1974. That's incredible. 
Wow. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, so is there anything I didn't cover? Is there anything else you wanted to add? When you get your EV, you won't be, won't be stopping for long, that's for sure. <laughs> That's right. That's a common thing about uh, uh, among EV owners. There's really only one regret, isn't it? And that is, I should have bought it earlier. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I ordered our Model X in 2014. Never went through with it, and that's the one thing that I've regretted. Uh, even though it was a really expensive car that I don't think I would have been able to justify back in those days, but still ended up regretting it. So. Um, all right, that's wonderful. Um, thanks very much, and um, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Um, actually, before I go, I should also um, wanted to say a really big thank you to the both of you. Um, so you guys, um, amongst a whole lot of other people in WA, have been really instrumental in um, building the community that's here in WA. And I know the way you guys operate, you're always willing to help people, always willing to spread the word about EVs. And um, yeah, ever since I've come into the community, thanks to you guys, um, it's just been an eye opener as to um, what a fantastic uh, place it is to be. So um, thank you very much for um, helping to pave the way for the rest of us. Um, it's yeah, it's a much uh, easier state a much easier um, city to own an EV now thanks to some of the early guys that did a lot of the hard yards like you guys. Yes, okay. No worries, no problem at all. Thanks guys.